what you're able to do then is take the map file and transform it and turn it into HTML, some file, PDF, Eclipse, help, and all the rest of it. So the map file is the roadmap, if you will, that tells the Data Open Toolkit, I want you to output this stuff in this sequence, in this order, in this setup. Now, it's important to point out that although DITA is interesting and potentially helpful and potentially various other things, it is not the holy grail of all things. And I think it's important to point that out because I do actually see that an awful lot. People say it's the be-all, end-all solution. It will make my life so much easier. It is so great. Well, it is potentially very, very helpful, but it is not this. Now. The next question that we have to ask is, you know, what is it? And the answer is it's a set of tools. It's a toolbox that's going to help you do things with documentation. Potentially useful, not necessarily exactly what you want to be doing. You might decide, well, you know, the hammer wasn't quite, I really needed a sledgehammer and there wasn't one provided. Can I get there? So then we get this really interesting question, is DITA better than XML? Now, for starters, DITA is XML. XML is a standard. It's a vocabulary. Uh, think of XML as being the alphabet. DITA is a particular language that uses the alphabet. So is it better than XML? Well, it's not the same thing. We're not comparing apples and apples. So you really have to look at DITA is a subset of XML or a type of implementation of XML. So is DITA better than building your own XML vocabulary from scratch? Perhaps. Uh, perhaps it's cheaper to build your own XML vocabulary from scratch. But really, the question is, you know, which one of these is better? And the answer that you get from every consultant in the universe is, of course, that it depends. And what it depends on is your content and your content ecosystem. Giraffes are better suited for certain kinds of ecosystems than penguins are. So if your content looks kind of like this, then perhaps you want a giraffe. That might be really kind of a good idea. But if you have content that looks more like this, then uh, the giraffe's not going to do so well. So you really need to think about this in terms of what are my content requirements? What are the things that I need for my content, and how am I going to work through those? Now, what does DITA's ecology look like? What is DITA's niche, and where would it work best? DITA works best when you have topic-oriented, modular content. That means, for example, that if you are writing the great American novel, DITA is probably not appropriate for that. If you are writing information that really needs to flow from A to B to C to D, and people really need to read that as a whole and not as pieces and parts, then DITA may not be the best solution for you. But if you're writing procedural software documentation, which is what DITA was originally intended for, or any other kind of procedural documentation, then it can make a lot of sense. If your content is topic-oriented and modular but not software-related, for example, if you're doing some sort of medical device documentation, DITA can make a lot of sense for that. Um, the people in the semiconductor industry have taken a look at DITA and have, some, have built or are in the process of building a semiconductor specialization, which we'll get to, but basically a custom version of DITA that is more suitable for semiconductors. There is an e-learning specialization for e-learning kinds of content. So if you're creating online classes, web-based classes, those kinds of things, there is a version of DITA that could make sense for that. But when you start thinking about things like uh, sales proposals, uh, they tend to be topic-oriented and modular. But out of the box, DITA isn't going to be exactly right for that kind of content because that's not what it was designed for. It can be made to work, but it might not be exactly right. DITA has been designed from the ground up for content reuse. There are several different ways of doing content reuse in DITA, which I will talk about in a bit. And so if you need to reuse topics across different deliverables, if you need to reuse a warning message across different parts of your document, those types of things, 
DITA may be suitable for you. Because DITA is a standard, DITA does have the ability, of course, to support um, inter information exchange. So IBM has standardized on DITA. If you are a vendor that produces content for IBM, you may very well be required to move to DITA. So that would be a good argument for using DITA. Also, if you want to exchange information with other organizations that you're working with, that might be something to look at. The semantic requirements for DITA, or actually the semantic requirements for your content, if they are minimal, DITA may be a good fit. Now, I promised you no jargon, but there we are. So if your information has some metadata, things like product and audience, you know, who's the audience for this topic, what is the product we're document here, documenting here, those kinds of things, DITA will support that. But DITA, by default, is a set of tags that are basically just um, pretty similar to HTML. And if you think about HTML tagging, there's not a whole lot going on there. You don't have a whole lot of different tags to work with, and you don't get a lot of sort of good labeling going on in your information. So if you really need to be very specific about your content, DITA may not be the right approach for you. It's, it's pretty wide open, and it's pretty sort of casual in terms of how much you get in terms of tagging and metadata. So that's something to think about. Now you can, of course, again, customize it and make it work that way. So that's the niche that DITA falls into. Its strengths are that it is topic-oriented and modular, has a lot of support for reuse in a couple of different ways, and also I should mention good support for uh, conditional content. And it has the specialization mechanism, which we'll talk about how you do that and how you can customize the model. What DITA doesn't do so well is provide you with a very specific kind of content model. The output that you get through the Open Toolkit is um, rudimentary is a polite word. The output that you get through the Open Toolkit is not attractive. It is, and the Open Toolkit itself is really quite difficult to customize. So if you don't like the output you're getting, you're going to have some, some, some costs associated with going through and building through the Open Toolkit. Specialization, the process of customizing the content model to your requirements can be really extremely challenging. So if you're going to need to specialize, you're going to have some issues there, and that's something to worry about. So I wanted to give you an example of what a topic looks like, just to sort of give you an example of what it looks like and see whether you can, in fact, read the topics. So this is a simplified DITA topic. You'll notice that I have a topic element at the top. And then inside that, we have a title element. That would be the title of this particular topic. You have a body section. And inside that, we have a bunch of P tags and a note. So it's human readable. I would not describe it as particularly attractive necessarily, but it is human readable. And you can kind of see how it's organized with a topic, a title, and then the body of your main of the topic here. It looks a lot like HTML. You have P tags in there. You have a body tag. The title and the topic and the note tag are different from what you have in HTML. Generally, you have some reasonable stuff going on here. Now let's take a look at another topic. And this is one that I desimplified a little bit. So I added, first of all, the declarations at the top, the XML declaration, the doc type declaration. Those should be there. but Really, as long as they're there, you don't really have to worry about it too much. They're just there. You read on past them, and off you go. There is a DITA element, which serves as a container for topics if you happen to want to put multiple topics into one file. And then we have a topic with an ID. Every topic does have to have an ID. And in this particular case, there is an audience of internal. So this content was intended only for an internal audience. There is a title of art. art. There is a body section. And then we have various P tags. We have a bold tag, a B tag in there. And we have an ID down on the note. Note type danger, ID equals no feeding. And we'll look at what that's going to do for us a little bit later. Um, that will actually allow us to reference.